There we go. There we go. Nice. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hello back to you. <laughs> Hi, Veronica. How are you? I'm doing well, Jeremy. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. Uh, it was really nice catching up with you before we started this. Uh, hearing about your, your journeys across Europe, across Japan, growing up in California, your family. I know who you are. Why don't you yeah. tell our Oh Hello audience who I have the pleasure of speaking with? Wow, that is a big, big question, but hello, everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Radhika Parashar. I, I am a human being, a creative, an artist who is also a sales enablement practitioner uh, currently at Figma. So I lead a global team. I'm actually focused primarily on our emerging markets region, uh, specifically in EMEA and our JPAC regions. I have the pleasure of working with a fantastic team of 10 sales enablement folks, and we together support um, our entire global sales organization. So that's kind of the, the, the quick summary of who I am right now. In previous roles, uh, Jeremy and I have had the pleasure of working together at TubeMogul, uh, which was acquired by Adobe, as we all know, um, Couchbase, another NoSQL database company, and most recently TikTok by Dance, where I led uh, global sales enablement as well. So you've been at some amazing tech companies. You've had a global experience. How has that defined who you are? Tell us a little bit about who you are, about what defines you as, as, as a mentor, someone who's going to be part of the Oh Hello tribe. Mm. I honestly, I feel like so much of the experiences that I've been fortunate to have been a part of have defined me just as much as I've been defined by them, or I should say they have defined me as much as I guess in some ways I've left my mark there in, in some sense. A big, yeah, yeah. A big part, a big part of that is, is I think core values that are very intrinsic to who I am, kindness, empathy, any year for inclusivity. But then I think the the sort of hard, hard values, I would say things like courage, adaptability, the ability to, to sort of have that resilience to go through life experiences, go through the, the things that I've experienced in my background, apart from just work, that have allowed to kind of build on this this whole career that I've had that that has been just honestly the, the biggest blessing. It's it's just been the most incredible time. Get, get a little deeper on that. So yeah. courage, empathy, kindness, yeah. resiliency, um, adaptability. How has that defined you? Get, get deeper, like peel that one layer back from the onion. Yeah. So um, I started my career actually in social justice. So I, I was in the nonprofit world actually all through my years at, at UC Berkeley while I was there. And then after that, I actually lived in India for a year before I transitioned to tech. So a big part of my background was I grew up in an ashram. I grew up as a Hare Krishna. I was homeschooled from kindergarten to 12th grade. A very sort of like a traditional background to kind of then be launched into the university world and be like, well, what's going on? This world is, is a place. <laughs> yeah. But from there, I think having that background in social justice really gave me an eye and an ear towards everything that was happening in the world and feeling like, wow, not only is there so much that needs to be solved for, but right now in a capitalistic world, the way to do that is to as quickly as possible raise capital, <laughs> gain the experience needed to run through these kinds of experiences and these kinds of organizations, and then somehow in some future world, continue to have the impact, continue to, to, to try to support the organizations that are doing the work, but then more importantly, come back to give back in all of the opportunities that I can in the future and even right now to, to build on that, that sort of a background. So I actually left the social justice world. I left sort of doing nonprofits very much with the year of coming back, but with the experience then of being in tech for X amount of years, having the management experience, being able, because I saw that a lot of the people who were advancing in that kind of world tend to be like X McKinsey, X Google, X whatever. And they have this storied management background that I think a lot of organizations just want, you know, for, for the same reasons. And there's so many transferable skills, right? There's fundraising, there's the ability to write content, there's the ability to talk to donors, just basic admin skills that just translate across all of our, our realms. 
So it was it was a it was a difficult initial transition, but once I had the foot in the door intact, which was a complete stroke of luck, by the way. Like there was there was no real like person to pull me through it. I think what happened was just a sort of spray and pray, like, okay, let's see who we can talk to, where we can go. And I was really, really lucky to have the opportunity to start my career off at two. It's awesome. It's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And having those kinds of experiences and starting off in the going from homeschooling to social justice to a very capitalistic environment to the yeah. global travel to sales enablement <laughs> across different cultures different regions of the globe really opens up who someone can be so that was yeah. obviously both a loaded question and a loaded mm-hmm. answer assuming that there is going to be a lot more to it so i really appreciate you you highlighting those components of course who are some some mentors that have made a, a lasting impact on you radhika honestly i have been blessed with a lot of incredible, incredible women throughout my career who have just shown not only through their example and paving the way, but also by opening those proverbial doors by, you know, helping me understand what it means to have a seat at the table, to help me show up in the way that I need to. So I'm grateful always to Michelle Chen, my first manager at Tube. Love Uh, Michelle Chen. Incredible, incredible woman. She really just, at that point in my career, I had studied abroad in university, but I had never experienced what it meant to be a you know business person in a global context. And she took a bet on me at a very early age to go build out programs in, at that time, Australia and England. And I, I think we were just chatting about this, but I think the, the, those early experiences, realizing that with the right resources and with the right facilities, it's not that different from running a program in America. There's obviously cultural nuances. There's all of the sensitivities that I think just having an empathetic background helps you kind of deal with, but the actual nuts and bolts of like how to run a program, how to train someone, what works, what doesn't work. um, That was the first sort of taste that I had of kind of going, wait a second, I could live here (laughs) or I could move somewhere else. And this, this would be fine. Like this wouldn't be this completely foreign experience. So she's definitely one that comes to mind. Um, But outside of just a, a real human being who I know, I also want to just call out, I've, I've been reading the Rick Rubin book that I think a lot of folks have been uh, consuming recently, The Creative Act, but I've been a massive fan of just his work and who he is as a person for so long and what he stands for, but more importantly, this act of being creative um, and identifying as one. And then A.R. Rahman, who's a music composer, an Indian music composer, I am absolutely in awe of his work, his body of work and the way he shows up. So those are those are three awesome. that I would I, I love these. <laughs> I love that you just <laughs> went across the spectrum of going from uh, from a, a business mentor, someone who's so empathetic and so just sweet, but also uh, understands like where the puck is moving, to one of the biggest <laughs> producers and creative <laughs> minds in musical history, to then a, a musician who I'm not as familiar with, yeah. but now I, I need to look that up afterwards. Um, but nonetheless, thank you for, for highlighting all of those. Of course. Within the Yohello platform, you're going to be able to donate to 40 plus different uh, non-for-profit amazing causes. What's, what's a non-for-profit that's near and dear to your heart? Well, I have left America <laughs> and I'm now <laughs> in London. <laughs> yes, you are in London. So let's, like, from a philanthropic yeah. component, yeah. what's a charity or a cause that, that's near and dear to you? Well, so that's where I was, I was, I was going to come to, which is that like a lot of the the philanthropy that I was so close to in America, the bills, the, the bill organization, for example, and a NAACP, sorry, I was like, wait, there's an A in there, NAACP. Um, these were organizations that I, I actively contributed to um, while I was there. I still believe in the causes. National Society for Reproductive Justice was another one that was really, really close to me, especially with all of the Roe v. Wade overturning and everything else that was going on in the U.S. when I left. Here in London, mental health has become such a massive cause uh, for me personally. Like I think I, I understand it at a level, not only just with my own experiences with, with men- taking care of my own mental health, but even the folks around me. Um, I think the weather causes that, but also just the society too. So just it's something that's very top of mind. So there's, there's, a, there's an organization called Mind that I, I actively contribute to over here that I'm, I'm very fond of the work that they're doing. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, Radhika, I know that you've got to jump to another meeting. We <laughs> appreciate you. It was so good catching Thank up with you. you. Thank you so much for being part of the Oh Hello community. Thanks to everyone who's listening. We appreciate you. Thanks, Radhika. Thanks, Thank you everybody. Thanks so for having me.